All right, everyone, Cody here, and welcome back to my laboratory. So, it has come to my attention that there's numerous sources on the internet showing how to activate charcoal using just ordinary household chemicals. And this sounds pretty good, because injecting superheated steam into charcoal is not an easy thing to do. I've done it on a very small scale. I've got a video on that. It's one of my favorites. You should definitely go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. But yeah, if I could just do it with like drain cleaner or something, that'd be awesome. I could just make a whole lot of activated charcoal very easily without any danger of carbon monoxide poisoning, right? So let's go test it and see if any of these actually work. Actually, real quick, I should probably uh, say what activated charcoal is. So activated charcoal is essentially the same thing you get from partially burning wood, but this has been treated to increase its surface area so that more stuff can stick to it. it that's, that's really it. These uh, charcoal pieces are way too big. It'll take forever for fluid to penetrate them. So we do need to crush it up a little bit. Uh, this will slightly increase the surface area not really by a significant amount. I could grind it to a fine powder, that would increase the surface area, but then it's not really super useful anymore. So I kind of want something that's sand-sized, somewhere between a powder and pebbles. Now I've got my charcoal crushed and sorted to a uniform size. Here is what I'm going to use to attempt to chemically activate it. Uh, these are things that I've seen people on YouTube and elsewhere using. So this is calcium chloride, which will make a 20% by weight solution. Sodium hydroxide, also about 20% by weight solution. Lemon juice, which will be just straight. And a control of pure water. Okay, there's the solutions mixed up. Now I need the charcoal, so just like that. The lids are to keep the bugs out. Just to let these sit here and soak for 24 hours. Here we are, 12 hours in. See the lemon juice and the water, most of the charcoal sitting on the bottom. Sodium hydroxide and the calcium chloride solution. The charcoal is about split half and half. I suspect that is primarily due to the high density of these solutions. Yeah. Whoa. I recorded that, right? Well, here we are, 24 hours later. Looks like I've managed to save some of the charcoal in the control. Uh, what do I do with this? That's probably enough for my experiments, but I don't think pouring it out hurt any. Fortunately, it was the just the water one that tipped over. it with some distilled water. Put it back in the jar. And then I'm going to cover the charcoal with pure water once again to leach out the chemicals. So basically, any lemon juice in this case that is still trapped in the charcoal will move out into the water, pour off the water, put in more clean water. Hopefully I'll end up with just the charcoal. Well, let's uh, rinse them again. So here we are. The charcoal has been washed with pure water multiple times, and so now I should pretty much just have wet carbon. Uh, there is one 
issue. See if you can spot it. Some charcoal is still floating. So you can see those three have some floating charcoal. This one does not because I accidentally dumped it over behind the shelf there. So uh, what is causing that is probably some trapped stubborn air bubbles. Which wouldn't be a problem if they were all the same. But since they're not, I'm going to have to discard those floating bits. So now, all the samples will have just the sinking charcoal with no air bubbles. water on this one as well. Okay. So now uh, let's uh, transfer this to some little dishes so I can dry it out so we can weigh out some samples. So I've weighed out one gram of each of the charcoals and put them back in the jars, as you can see. And now I have my 31 and a half millimolar iodine solution. I am going to add three milliliters of it to each jar of charcoal. And an additional 10 milliliters of water. Okay, it's now hours later and the lemon juice, one you can see is still brown, so not all the iodine's been absorbed. The pure water one, uh, it's probably hard to see, but the water's clear. It's just water now. The one that was water soaked, and the same story for the calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to add another shot of iodine. Just to make the math a little easier, I'm going to raise the amount of liquid that I've added to each of these to 18 milliliters. So here we are. The solutions had time to be absorbed by the iodine. The solutions are still brown. So to find out how much is left, I'm going to pull out nine milliliters right up to there put it over here and titrate it using this burette, which is filled with a sodium thiosulfate solution. Over the top. So results time. Here's my little note card. As you can see, I figured that the one gram of charcoal absorbed 20.9 milligrams for the water-soaked char, 9.7 for the lemon juice, 21.0 for the sodium hydroxide, and 20.9 for the calcium chloride. And you'll notice the calcium chloride, sodium hydroxide, and the water are identical, essentially. Within the range of my experimental error, they very well could be the same number. The lemon juice, however, is significantly lower. It absorbed only about half the iodine that the others did. And I think what happened there is lemon juice you know, contains a whole bunch of large molecules that would have stuck to the charcoal, taken up area that the iodine could have stuck to. So basically, the lemon juice made the charcoal worse. So there we have it. Activating charcoal using ordinary household chemicals seems to be too good to be true. But hey, maybe you think I made a mistake, perhaps something wrong with my methods, or you think I'm pulling a fast one and trying to trick you guys somehow. Uh, if that's the case, go test this on your own. It's not that difficult. 
and I'd love to see the results. You know, there's lots of different kinds of charcoal, different starting materials, particle size, cooking temperatures. Maybe some combination of that, it would make a difference. Maybe if you have a particularly oily or tar-covered charcoal, the sodium hydroxide would help significantly. But if it was a viable method for activating the charcoal, I think I would have at least sawn something here, and I did not. Uh, the problem I have with all these videos and stuff on the internet showing how to activate charcoal is somebody who needs activated charcoal might find one of these videos and it's like, oh, I can just add lemon juice to it. Awesome. And then they do that. And now they've got a substance that's less useful. If they try to eat it to save their life from a poisoning or use it to purify water, it's going to be less effective than they're expecting. Like they're expecting activated charcoal, but they're getting worse than just the charcoal. That's dangerous. So if you produce a video like this, test it. That's the least you can do. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. So this video was originally longer. I had another experiment going on where I soaked some sawdust in calcium chloride and then turned it into charcoal to see if that would help activate it. Uh, it made the video really long, so I've cut that out and made it its, its own bonus video, which you guys can go see. The link will be somewhere. So.